Throughout history, prospectors and explorers have searched for signs that point to hidden gemstones. While rivers, soil, and rock formations often give clues, one of nature's most reliable indicators comes from a surprising source, plants. Certain species of plants thrive only in mineral-rich soils, soils that often harbor gemstones below the surface. These plants act as silent locators, living markers that reveal the Earth's hidden wealth. By understanding them, prospectors can identify areas worth closer inspection without lifting a shovel. The first type of plant associated with gemstones is indicator trees. These trees are not randomly scattered across landscapes. They grow where the soil composition allows them to flourish, often drawing nutrients from mineralized ground. In some regions, tamarind, eucalyptus, and teak are noted as subtle companions to mineral-bearing soils. The explanation lies beneath their roots. The presence of mineralized gravel beds that sometimes cradle sapphires, garnets, or quartz. A seasoned prospector knows that the shade of these trees often conceals more than fallen leaves. It conceals geological history. Moving deeper into the wild, the second plant type emerges, grasses of mineral soils. Certain grasses have evolved to tolerate soils rich in specific elements. Elements also linked with gemstone formations. Tall, wiry grasses, sometimes silvery in sheen, have been observed growing across old alluvial plains. These plains, formed by the slow movement of rivers over centuries, are known to deposit crystals and gem-bearing gravels. The grass roots act as stabilizers, binding the soil, while hinting at the treasures locked beneath. Their appearance in clusters across otherwise barren ground often signals that minerals, and sometimes gemstones, lie close. The third type is more delicate, but no less telling. Wildflower Pioneers Certain species of wildflowers thrive where gemstone-bearing veins rise close to the surface. Their colors often mirror the minerals beneath, vivid purples, deep reds, or unusual yellows, not because the flowers themselves contain gems, but because their roots feed on mineral traces in the soil. Geologists have long observed this relationship in areas rich with quartz and amethyst. Where the soil chemistry is hostile to most plants, these wildflowers flourish, standing as bright indicators above an otherwise rugged landscape. Suspense builds when these plant indicators are seen together when trees, grasses, and wildflowers cluster in unusual harmony. The earth is rarely random. Such alignments often mark geological transitions. And where transitions exist, gemstones often follow. The fourth plant type draws attention not for its beauty, but for its resilience. Shrubs of harsh ground. Shrubs with gnarled, twisting stems are often the only vegetation that can survive in soils carrying high mineral content. These hardy plants push their roots deep into rocky layers, sometimes reaching cracks that once carried hydrothermal fluids, the same fluids responsible for depositing crystals and gems. When found in clusters across eroded hillsides, these shrubs silently reveal where erosion has exposed gem-bearing veins. Finally, the fifth type of plant is among the most fascinating, metal-accumulating species. These plants are rare, but they naturally absorb unusual levels of minerals from the ground. Some species contain traces of nickel, chromium, or even beryllium, elements closely tied to the formation of emeralds and other gems. Their leaves, when analyzed, reveal chemical signatures of the earth below. While most observers walk past them, trained eyes know that such plants may mark the exact soil chemistry where gemstones form. Together, these five plant types form a natural code a living guide to the hidden geology of the earth. Indicator plants are more than clues on their own. They become powerful when read in the context of the landscape. A single tree, a patch of grass, or a cluster of shrubs may mean little in isolation. But when several of these species grow together, and when their presence aligns with water flow, mineral soils, or exposed rock, the signal becomes undeniable. Consider the case of sapphire-bearing regions, in certain highland zones, eucalyptus trees and wiry grasses grow side by side on eroded hills. Beneath these soils, the gravel beds contain corundum crystals, the mineral family of sapphires. The plants are not the treasure themselves, but their survival marks the chemistry of the ground that nurtures the gems. 
In areas known for emeralds, shrubs and metal accumulating plants often dominate rocky slopes. These plants tolerate the beryllium-rich soil where emeralds are born. Their twisted, resilient growth is nature's signal that the geology beneath is unusual. When combined with quartz veins and dark shale outcrops, they paint a clear picture. This is emerald country. For garnet deposits, the evidence often lies in wildflower pioneers. Bright flowers glowing red and purple against barren soil are nourished by iron-rich ground. This same chemistry allows garnets to form in metamorphic rock, and erosion frees them into the gravels below. The flowers above are the heralds, the crystals below are the reward. Black sands and riverbeds add another layer to the story. When indicator plants cluster along the edges of streams, their presence reveals mineral content washed down from higher ground. These plants thrive in the mineral-rich sediment, while beneath the water, gems settle in pockets where the current slows. The connection is direct. Plants mark the chemistry, water moves a stone, and the patient prospector follows both. Of course, not every patch of unusual vegetation hides gemstones. False signals exist. Some plants adapt simply to poor soils with no connection to minerals of value. This is where knowledge sharpens the search. Geological mapping, soil study, and careful observation separate chance from certainty. The difference between wasted effort and remarkable discovery lies in reading not just the plant, but the entire environment in which it grows. The method can be summarized into a professional approach. 1. Identify the plant types known to thrive on mineral soils, trees, grasses, flowers, shrubs, and accumulators. 2. Study their patterns. A lone specimen may be coincidence, but clusters along a geological feature mean more. 3. Observe the terrain. River bends, hillsides, and eroded slopes often expose gem-bearing layers. 4. Check the soil composition. Darker, denser, or unusually gritty soils usually accompany mineral wealth. 5. Link plants with geology. Only when both signals align should a site be considered for closer study. This balance of botany and geology is what professionals rely on. It turns random searching into directed exploration. And it explains why seasoned prospectors often seem to know exactly where to look. Suspense deepens when all five plant types converge. Imagine a hillside where shrubs claw at mineral veins, grasses shimmer silver in the wind, wildflowers paint the ground with unnatural brightness, and towering trees rise from dark soil. This is not chance. It is nature's announcement that something valuable lies below. Across continents, this technique has repeated itself. From Asia to Africa, from South America to remote mountain valleys, plants have marked the path to discovery. They do not lie. They do not move without reason. Their very survival depends on the minerals locked within the soil, the same minerals that crystallize into gemstones. The lesson is simple, yet profound. Prospecting does not always begin with a pickaxe. Sometimes it begins with the leaves on a branch, the stem of a flower, or the roots of a tree gripping hidden gravel. The earth speaks through its vegetation. For those willing to observe, the message is clear. The five plant types revealed today are not folklore. They are proven natural indicators, respected by geologists, miners, and gemstone hunters across the world. By learning their secrets, any prospector gains the ability to see patterns others overlook. On ProGems, the mission is to share these hidden methods, techniques that combine science, history, and exploration, so that the search for gemstones becomes not guesswork, but discovery guided by knowledge. Subscribe to ProGems for more insights where the mysteries of the natural world are decoded and the secrets of gemstones are brought to light. Until the next journey, watch the rivers, study the stones, and remember, sometimes the surest path to gems begins with the plants beneath your feet. This is ProGems, and the search for hidden treasure continues.